Solving a pack of lies. Okay, my next guest came to me uh, uh, in the following manner. And he'll, of course, tell you, uh, because I'm, I want to recommend, I think it's on, uh, on Rumble where this person actually published the... It was an epic interview. I listened to it. I, I, I was so enthralled by the conversation with my next guest, whose name is Jim Pugh. Uh, he's got an MBA. He's a life coach and instructor of business-related courses. Jim, for the past 35 years, has studied the theological concept of ancient scriptures and the practical applications in today's world. And in, in his business international travels, he took the time to speak to leaders of various religious, religious denominations to create a perspective of cultural religious beliefs today. He's taught a spiritual perspective of world history and most recently has addressed the current spiritual war the world is experienced, experiencing today in radio interviews and podcasts, of which that's how I came in contact with his name. But he lectures about spiritual concepts and history, continues to develop from self and understanding of God's rules, principles, and laws, and how they apply to the nasty and chaotic world we live in. It is his hope that he may be a grain of sand with a loud voice to provide hope to all the people that may listen. And I'm going to say this right now. If it were not for, for me hearing uh, that interview, um, you know, but by doing so, you know, I, I call it the, um, uh, the, but, the bucket brigade we are. When we find a, a great uh, uh, expert in his sphere of influence, I believe so. I want to open up our conversation just Give everyone uh, the words from your own mouth, uh, the comfort uh, that they know deep down inside of their soul that we are in the epic battle of not just our lifetime, but I think in all of human history. This is a spiritual battle between good and evil on planet Earth, is it not? Oh, yes. And it goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. If you, if you study the scriptures and look at the the cyclical times throughout uh, history, even leading up to today, what you find is basically the war that we've been in since that time is the war of good and evil. And right now, instead of being more physical war like it uh, was in history, it's more of a mental war. Basically, this is a war of the mind. It's, it's who's going to get to control of your mind and therefore it's control of your spirit because basically they're intended to just break you down. And this goes back to the two bloodlines, basically all the way back to, as I said, to uh, creation itself. And you've, you've heard it talk about uh, the bloodlines uh, in mainstream media, even, even today. I mean, basically they're coming out with the understanding that, that there is bloodline issues with this. And I'm glad that, it, that basically the truth is coming out finally. It protect our God-given rights when we showed up here you know, naked, we had certain unalienable rights, but your mission on God as government is to create educational solutions, including books, seminars, providing the truth about government and world history. Our society today is being led by elites that are focused on not God's authoritative structures, his constitution and statutes, but on worldly views associated with a pagan God. Since the beginning of time, the people of this world have been blinded by the lies, corruption, and propaganda education from our government as dictated by the elites. That is not just a mouthful, it's an absolute fact that yeah. you can go back yeah. in history to see how they've formed uh, even the you know the maritime laws, law of the sea, uh, and the way they, they set up uh, a commerce worldwide, the postal services, all of that, it's very, very real, is it not? Yeah, I, I chuckle because I'm uh, on my... Uh on my website, I have a blog that I'm actually rewriting history, and I'm rebuilding history from from scratch. And I'm up to the American Revolutionary War, and part of what I have done is lead everybody through the history of the American Revolution as majority of us have been taught in school with some additional pieces, but I'm actually getting into now the history within the history that we're not taught in school. And I chuckle when you brought up the uh, postal system and stuff because what, I, what is going to be revealed here very quickly is, is Europe planned this war. Uh, they planned it for the benefit of protecting them. And I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but 
it's amazing how uh, how all of the pieces are going to come together in history now. So if you look at if you look at what is going on today, we're sort of in the in in the transitionary mode. I can I can say that the transitioning of the laws to bring the original Constitution of 1776 up to current date has been completed and was completed right before the election and um, because basically the military and Trump when they pulled the trigger they wanted to make sure that we hit the ground with all eight cylinders and so they they did everything they needed to get that get the laws up to current state as best as they can knowing the fact that he was going to have to do a lot of EOs now if you look at his EOs right before he left the office and you're saying, oh my gosh, you know, those are dated for delivery in five days, a month, and 45 days. He's, he has written the executive orders that would allow the transition to flow nicely with all of the protection mechanisms in establishing the rule of law, which basically, he, you know, Donald Trump's a rule of law president, and establishing the rule of law necessary in, in you know what we what we're seeing is a cleaning of the swamp today. Mm. Uh, but but going back just a bit, and if we look at go back to the 1871 a bit, just a little bit more. The uh, the way that they did this is kind of unique because they they daisy chain corporations. And think think about this for a moment. IMF stepped in when IMF got on board and, and basically required all of the states to incorporate and incorporate with through the federal government. And it, that was the only ability for the states, well, they were incorporated before, but the way that they had to change. But the way that they incorporated was that was their only ability to have standing with the federal government. Now, the federal government needed that because that's where that's where the money is collected to go to the federal government. Okay, we as citizens are citizens of that state, and the state is responsible for the collection of tax dollars and providing those tax dollars into the corporation. So, by daisy chaining, if you look at this. We have the federal government as a corporation. We have a state as a corporation. We have counties as corporations, and we have city municipalities as corporations. And they're all linked together. So when you have a police force, think of it this way. When you have a police force like you had in Oregon that the mayor said stand down, they're underneath the corporation, not the Constitution to protect the people. So this daisy chain of corporation is the structure by which they did that. And we'll see more of that coming out as this unravels and people get the education necessary to I actually did. see how all this is going to interject but, again, I've done a little bit of research recently. I found that the United States Corporation Company uh, is actually filed in the state of Florida and it's operating its business out of the state of Delaware. And I'm looking at all these corporations that are intertwined. And that daisy chaining you just described, I went down that rabbit hole. And they've got this complex web of corporations. Right. And the fact that we've got, we're now on our fourth constitution after the one in 1871. And you have to, you have to look at that and because international debt expires after 70 years. So every 70 years, they had to put another corporate, another uh, corporation in place with another constitution. Even though it was the same constitution role from one corporation to another, we've gone through four constitutions and we're on our fourth corporation now in this, in this folly because the bankers had to have control. Now, we'll get in. We'll, there's another subject that we might cover at some other point, and a lot of that goes around in the in the year of 1999, where 
basically we can we can look at this and see how it begins to position back to the republic. But far enough and say the the thing that's in, the thing that I like about unraveling this is we actually get to see a picture of things that happen and put it back into the state of how we got to that level from history. And, you know, the corporations, the executive orders, the notice to Congress, you know, the barriers around Washington, D.C., the, the smartness on having that, uh, having that EO to basically roll all of the assets of that corporation back into the republic without having to go through any legal issues. So all of those 11 states and their assets and whatnot, I mean, it, it, he was brilliant in how he got this done. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. It, you know, uh, th th this is the most upsetting thing, and it should be for everybody that's hearing this, maybe for the first time. Um, this is the most upsetting thing, is that we're constantly lied to. We're, I mean, they just don't tell the truth about the complexity of the corporations and why we need it. They also don't tell, and this is, they could call us conspiracy theorists, but I have legal proof and also had my social security number and when I was in federal detention, uh, me as a uh, people that are in federal detention as prisoners, uh, you're also traded uh, on what they call it. You have a swift number assigned to you and you have a monetary value assigned to every single prisoner. Every social security number is traded, right? Because we're chattel and we have value, right? Uh, but we are in fact traded on the exchanges, are we not? <coughs> yeah, but you've done that at birth. At birth. Take it all the way back. Take it all the way back to birth. So, uh, when they when they put the social security system in, uh, there's some there's play on words like uh, we're a vessel or we're a, we're, we're a person that is dead in in, in the sea, and the doctor who births us. Think about how it ties back to the maritime law. The doctor who births us. The, it, we're in a dock called a hospital. And he births us, so we're at a birthing location tied to maritime law. <clears throat> and the birth certificate becomes the document by which it goes into the legislative side that they actually take and, and they determine the value of, from, from statistics, they determine the value of the revenue that you're going to generate and they sell your stock certificate in an open market exchange. Yes. You know, if President Trump um, one day, right before he left, came to the podium and he said, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I have an announcement. Aliens are in charge. You know, the UFOs are going to be coming down. I'm going to introduce you to a couple of my friends. We would have accepted that much easier than if he couldn't go to the podium and say, you're all in a system of enslavement. And this thing is so complex, we've tried to do everything we can uh, to unpack this thing. Uh, but this is, do you believe that this is what he's been doing? Because I'm also hearing conflicting reports that he's just an average guy that's a victim of this entire system. That uh, he's not, that, what? And you're laughing at that? And that's great. Because I'm hearing conflicting reports that there is a plan, that he has had a plan in place he knew about what we're talking about right now and he's made every step possible to free us a plan in place he knew about what we're talking about right now and he's made every step possible to free us from this system even it's going to happen globally is that correct yeah well let's take let's take that comment let's go back into history as please as well so when john f kennedy was elected president he warned us of this in several speeches. Matter of fact, he warned us in a speech in Houston, Texas before flying to Dallas, Texas before he was assassinated. And when he was assassinated, there was a group of Patriot generals that got together that devised a planning mechanism that would allow them over time to break the spider web down bit by bit by bit and develop a plan to take back the country. Now, if you go forward in time, Eisenhower established the CIA and he also warned us about 
making sure that we paid a great deal of attention to the military industrial complex. And then Reagan came through and said the same thing. All right. But when George W. You know, the father got into office, he made speeches that were totally different. He made speeches that we had we have new frontiers that we can actually go to with a new world order. So the Bush family is all in this from the get go, all the way back to to before Hitler, to be honest with you. And that's another whole subject that we can get into at some other day. But that those generals continued with the plan from nineteen sixty eight to two thousand and ten when they thought they were ready to go and they approached Donald Trump at that time to to consider being president with the understanding of what was going to happen when he got into office. And he was supposed to come out in 2012 against Obama, but they weren't ready, and so they delayed it until 2016. So I can tell you that Donald Trump is, is so squeaky clean because the military did not want any area of legal injustice to be brought in against the man because they knew the amount of effort that there was just going to be done to destroy him in the first place. Oh, yeah. We're seeing it right now, even after he right. left, left office. Yeah. Right. So, so in looking at that and understanding that, he knew coming into the office what he was going to do. And the military had a plan that if he didn't get elected in 2016, they were going to they were going to do something that nobody really wanted to happen. They were going to take back forcibly the country. I mean, it was to the point that they knew what the next eight years were going to be. If they didn't do it then, then they 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 would have to do it. So. One way or the other, we would have gotten to this point, but we've gotten to it more peacefully in the way that we have gone. Now, I want to bring up just one more point because I think it's it's a critical thing for everybody to understand. Donald Trump is so morally correct. Now, I'm not saying he does everything right. And he, you know, he's flamboyant, and, you know, so forth and so on. But he's so morally right that he and his family would not accept one dime from the corporation mm. in any form. Okay, in his presidential campaigning to his salary. Matter of fact, he gives it right back to the corporation. So you, you need to understand who this guy is. This guy is, one, he is more than a patriot. He is a godsend to us as the republic in addition to several of the patriots are going to be named shortly as well. Excuse the term, uh, but it, but it's appropriate. Unimpeachable. Um, yeah. mor- Absolutely. Mor- ultimately, yeah. morality. As it, so this is why he was selected, because the military obviously needs help. FEMA, um, I, l- l- let, me, let me ask you this, because we're, we're going we're gonna to come to present day right now. It seems like... Uh, Biden is in there. He's got this stack of, you know, executive orders. He's signing them off. He's killing jobs, killing babies. He's killing just everything. Uh, but is it seems like he's also powerless to this entity that's on the outside uh, right now to his presidency. Is he powerless? Yes. 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 There's, yes. There's nothing that he's doing that is. I mean, agencies are told to work with him. All right, in such a way that basically they don't alarm the public. Trump and the military wants to do this in the less chaotic environment possible and with the most protection to the citizenry of the United States. So if you look at what Trump did, Trump gave them every opportunity to come clean. He knew what they were going to do in the election because he wrote the EO before the election was there. Matter of fact, the night of the election, he watched the election in a skiff with military intelligence, watching them do this dirty deed. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so when you when you consider all of this, 
what, what I would say is that, you know, you're from your listeners' point of view, they don't probably know all of this because it's not something that's on the mainstream media. Mm-mm. Certainly okay. not. Yeah. But it's something that sh- they should have comfort in and now being able to sort of connect some of the dots that are going on in our current format. You know, I um, I said I, I wanted us to end this conversation naturally, and uh, and I do want to have a conversation about, and we can only speculate. There's certain signs, and everybody knows that just things are just not right. You see, Biden there signing executive orders, and he's mumbling, uh, "I don't even know what I'm signing." You know, Kamala Harris is telling him to go ahead and do it anyway. That was just odd to me. I mean, can you imagine that? You know, that this battleship, the person at the helm is you know deaf dumb and blind you know we're we're out at sea just wandering aimlessly with the world's right. most powerful sure. government i mean it's just it doesn't feel comfortable to me so i want to have the conversation with you and and we we're allowed to uh make assumptions or speculate as to where we're going to go president trump left everybody's disappointed we're understanding he's coming back in some form, he says. He speaks in almost coded language. Um, is it something for us to read into? Where do you think we're going right now? I want you to lay this out for us here uh, based on your interpretation, your analysis. And, you know, obviously your, your credentials are awesome. You, you do this work. You study it very closely. Where are we going? What do you think is going to happen with the United States of America? We're going to go back to a republic. And we're going to go back to providing all the citizenry with their sovereign rights. And everything that is tied to that corporation, when it's finally dissolved, now it's bankrupt, uh, and whoever you want to talk to legally, it's been discharged, but it's not been dissolved. Until we remove the people from that area and get... The, the citizenry to understand of what they have done, uh, everybody's going to feel like that this is going to be in, in a flux of chaos. So here's what I think. I think the military is under operation now to clean the world of all of the bad actors. And in, in that process, we'll see a lot of bad actors in Washington, D.C., that are basically rounded up and dealt with from a justice point of view. Mm-hmm. Now, I think that there there's over, if you look, I mean, there's there's probably 500,000 sealed indictments, and that's that's just a, a, a wild ass guess right now worldwide. Okay, there's we're over 220,000 in the United States, and I think what you're gonna what you'll see is that FEMA will establish a federal court system that that manages the court process. And think about this, Donald Trump put over 300 constitutional judges inside the federal system. Every one of them knew the plan. So I think those judges will come out of the federal system and go into the FEMA system under constitutional attorneys and FEMA will set up a court system to manage the court cases on all of the individuals that are arrested for pedophilia, child, child sex trafficking, uh, all of the federal crimes. Yeah. Okay. And I think the military, well, of course, I already know the military, are, are having tribunals, which basically we don't even know yet. You know, I would ask you, where's Hollywood's A-list or where are the governors or politicians that you don't hear anything about right now? I, I think the military has already started the tribunals, and I think what's going to happen is the, they, their, their responsibility for treason, seditions, and crimes against humanity. And if you recall, Sidney Powell and Lynn Wood were in the uh, military court three weeks ago um, getting the indictments unsealed and issued for people so i what i and i think what's going to happen is that all of this is going to be made public donald trump's the guy 
that he doesn't care as long as it's not gruesome entertainment, basically. He doesn't care the fact that basically these people feel like that they have rights, that their their injustice to humanity shouldn't be disclosed. I think he's going to put it on national television, and I think he's going to give us movies of confessions and trials. And in the process of that, establishing the republic. You know, you, you have to, I don't know if you followed this morning, we actually covered it. Lynn Wood actually put on his uh, Telegram channel a whistleblower um, uh, expose, testimony by a whistleblower, by an attorney. So he's known about the stuff, but he's leaking this stuff out. Bomb, bomb, bombshell. That if, in fact, what this guy was talking about at the highest levels of our government, if it's true, and I, I assume that Lynn Wood, he's no spring chicken that he's got more to back this stuff up. He's just kind of leaking it out a little bit at a time because it'd be easier to talk about UFOs landing and, you know, saying that the aliens are in charge than just right. say that this is how corrupt the entire global governance uh, is. It's it's just absolutely corrupted. Uh, so what you're speaking of is very, very plausible, and we're seeing evidence that a lot of very, very bad things have been happening behind the scenes. And you're saying that these people are going to be held to account. That's what yes. you're saying. Yeah, and I'd say that it's already started as well. Okay, where, like, where's John Durham, for instance? Remember the Durham well, investigation? Well, John, John Durham needs a court system that can try the cases in. I think what's, what, what you'll find is, I, I think you'll find some really unique twists and turns in this. I think Durham's going to be enjoined by some other high-profile figures that have been previously in the DOJ, uh, alongside to process this case. He cannot process, even with the attorneys that are going to be left, he cannot process this case fast enough in the court system. It will be five years just with the indictments that are had to go through the, the federal court system. Yeah. So, so I think what you're going to find in, in, is some unique twist in this. Uh, you, could, you could see um, a bar come back. You could see... Uh, a few others come back, okay, because they have they had they have not particular knowledge about this. Now remember, Barr was part of the investment attorney for the investment banking that funded the original Dominion yes. company. Okay, so he has he has you know direct knowledge. So I, I think you're going to find some twist. I'm not saying it, it is or not, but I think you're going to find some serious twist in this as it comes forth as it's played out but Durham Durham's coming okay now for those people that are saying no you know Trump is riding off into the sunset and that's it maybe he's gonna run in 2024 the bottom line is nobody on either side of this thing know the highest level top secret stuff if this is to come and I believe that there's a possibility I've always held out hope and faith that it would that this is what he's been working on. None of us would know. It's not even leaking. It may have been told to General Flynn, maybe a very small select group group of people, but President Trump, here's my, here's where I want to end here. President Trump has had access to the NSA database. Anybody that was a target of surveillance, they know everything. They know, they could have listened to Chief Justice Roberts. They could have taken a look at everyone's emails, text messages, and that takes time to comb through, but this has taken time. But President Trump's access to the NSA database is probably the, it's gonna result in their downfall, correct? Him having yeah. access to that. And I, th I, think what, I think what you're seeing is a movie. And I think Trump has to play his part in the movie as well. Um, and I, I, I think that basically you'll find that he is in constant contact with the military generals and even issuing certain executive orders that are not published. People can't see, people wonder, why can't I see them? Because they're not in the old constitution, in the original constitution, there was not a requirement to publish executive orders. So it's not being registered what he's doing. Mm. And I also think that what you're gonna find is Flynn is playing a very high-level 
strategic role in this whole transition process because he knows where the bodies are buried. Mm. And, and and you agree with me then? This is at the highest level of secrecy that the oh, this is, is the best. Imagined. This is the best is unkept leak story out there. Mm. Okay, if you don't if you don't have your hands into certain areas where you can actually begin to connect the dots, mm -hmm. why, why in the world did they, you know, uh, they, they, they switched the National Guard to U.S. Marshals over, th over 2000? 2000. Why did they yeah. do that? Why did they do that? What is the purpose right. of that? Yeah. Yeah, you got to think about those things. And then why is the U.S. Marshal Service highly enacted now on multiple sites of securitizing whistleblowers. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got. I mean, you got to start putting the pieces together oh, yes. to see how it all comes together. Mm -hmm. But no, this has been the highly most classified, non-leaked thing in the history of the United States. All right, remind us here internationally, and then we'll wrap up. Oh, this is just not not just uh, an intriguing conversation, but this is just a very early chapter. And this thing that will will unravel, uh, and I'm going to have to invite you to come back on. But remind everybody what is happening internationally. Uh, we've got the Prime Minister of Italy resigning. Is it, uh, this just right. happened today? I mean, that's a major thing. Merkel has stepped down. Uh, well, what's the significance? The whole Netherlands ne Netherlands government resigned. Yes. Uh, the Politburo resigned. Uh, you've got. Uh, Nigeria had, had, I don't know, six politicians, high-level politicians that were either arrested or have died of COVID. Uh, I mean, everything's going on around the world, and you don't hear anything of Chavez, I mean, uh, uh, Venezuela anymore, and, you know, you, you look at Taiwan and its thing with China, I mean, p people need to understand internationally, this is an international change. This is not a U.S. change mm -hmm. because, in essence, the stronghold that, and we can get into this maybe next time when we get into maybe a banking thing where we talk about how it was off control. Mm -hmm. But the stronghold on the world was done via the Vatican, via the central bankers, mm -hmm. using the, have the U.S. military to be their enforcement arm. Yes, and that happened in 1970, and the Saudis are very, very connected to this because Kissinger went to the Saudis uh, when we de uh, uh, we we switched our currency and pegged it to uh, uh, to the petrodollar. We agreed not to tap into our reserves. The Saudis agreed to sell us cheap oil. Uh, we went to the petrodollar. Everybody turned in their gold, right? Well, we're forced to turn in their gold by Roosevelt. You couldn't own it. Yeah. Right, we're forced to. Right, but uh, uh, but. The, the backing of our currency by gold. That, that's a separate uh, full-length uh, uh, right. episode, and we will continue on. Sir, uh, your website, godisgovernment.com, and you said that on your blog you've got uh, recent posts. I'm going to the uh, the blog page itself up at, t up at the top. Um, History Rebuilt, Part 34. Uh, yeah. What you don't know about the American Revolution. Sir, I, your wealth of dollars, and I love how you use the term connect the dots because we can speculate and predict what's happening uh, because the dots are right in front of us and right. obviously something and that, is that, going that, on. That's the thing. I mean, basically, the, the breadcrumbs have been laid. Trump is signaling. Papeo is signaling. Mm -hmm. And you just need to connect the, little, the dots and it all comes. The puzzle starts to come together for you and, it, and you, it's pretty clear once you begin to do that. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for uh, for taking the time out and joining me. It's uh, it certainly exceeded my expectations. Thank you very, oh, very I much. It. I yeah. It. yeah, we're going to have you back on. We'll get you uh, scheduled on as uh, as information warrants, Mr. Pugh. Uh, GodIsGovernment.com. Go there. Do you have um, a way to sign up for your? You have a newsletter or? or... Yeah, basically, you can go up and sign up as a member. It's right below the navigation bar to the right. Fantastic. And, uh, sign up and Excellent. Sure.
Amen.